Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of our Raspberry Pi series. Today in our Nginx Proxy Manager tutorial, we will be looking at how to set up a fully qualified domain name that will point to our Raspberry Pi and will work with our Docker container applications. With most home internet service providers, they allocate to their customers a dynamic IP address. What this means is the public IP address assigned to your home internet connection will change in line with a lease period. What can also cause an IP change is your internet router or modem that has to be restarted. A fresh public IP address will then be assigned to it. So why this is important for a home server is if the IP address changes, then the domain DNS A entry will need to be updated with the domain register. This is to ensure that the domain name used knows the current IP address of your home router to send the traffic down to your Nginx proxy manager. Okay, so looking at our current scenario on our Raspberry Pi, we have a visitor who wants to get to our next cloud service on our Raspberry Pi. So this is a container and he knows the domain name. So this is a subdomain. So next cloud dot and then our domain name, whatever that may be. Now we have a domain name owned by a registrar who we have set inside there with an A record. We have put that our domain is connected to the IP address of our router. So as you can see, or router if you're in America, but as you can see is our router here is 83.245.75.9. Okay, so this would work in any scenario, this would work. So it knows it's HTTP or HTTPS traffic, which is on port 80 or 443. It will pass, the router will pass this down to Nginx. In Nginx, it will be configured that if that domain name comes through on these ports, it would forward it to our Raspberry Pi, as you can see, which is 192.168.2.5 on the port that we have provided, which in this case, in this scenario, is 3232. So what happens is, is if you have a dynamic IP address with your ISP, if you get somehow have to restart your service or anything happens, right, that's basically leased that IP address. It could even just run out of time and be reissued to your router. If this happens, then you will have a new IP address. Now you can see the problem now that occurs. If your visitor then puts in the nextcloud.domain, okay, and, and in your registrar, you have this IP address registered to your nextcloud.domain, it's going to come, to, it's not even going to get down to your router because it's not going to be able to locate your router. This whole connection right now is just going to end here. Okay, it's, it's just going to serve a not found page. So in this scenario, how we can try and circumvent this is we can actually install a duck DNS or a Cloudflare container. So what this container can do is it will notice that the IP address has changed. And then what it will do is it'll come back down the pipeline through your router back to, to where you have your DNS service providing. Now, you can't just do this with a normal standard registrar. What you will need to do is have a dynamic DNS service. So the two that we're looking at are DuckDNS and Cloudflare. So what will happen is, is it will update that IP address with that service. And then what that will do is then send back to, to the person who was looking for that domain the correct IP, making the connection work full circle and bringing back the next cloud server to your client. In today's episode, I'm going to be concentrating on DuckDNS, but in next week's episode, I'm going to be doing a full tutorial on Cloudflare and how to integrate that. If you don't have a domain name, you can use DuckDNS because basically you can use a subdomain of DuckDNS and that will still work with a container to keep, you, keep everything updated. Um, if you want a little bit more security, then I think Cloudflare is probably the better option. And I'll explain to you why in our next episode. So the container that we need to install on our Raspberry Pi is Linux server forward slash duck DNS. And it was updated eight days ago. Um, Linux server is amazing for a, all containers. I mean, anything to do with Raspberry Pi, they seem to have your back. So um, to check that it's compatible with a Raspberry Pi. So if it has ARM32 version 7, the latest, then it will work with Raspberry Pi OS, which is currently in 32-bit. Uh, so just scrolling down a little bit, we have a Docker Compose file with version 2.1 so we can actually use this in Portainer which is what we're going to do. So what we're going to do first is we are going to go to DuckDNS and we're going to log in. DuckDNS gives you several ways to log in. Um, I've just used my Gmail account in this instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a subdomain that we can use. So a2t.duckdns.org and we're going to add that. So that's done. So I can now use this subdomain it's going to have my IP address here, which is blanked out at the moment, so you won't be able to see that. But it will currently take your IP address of your home right now, okay? So, or wherever you're connecting from, it'll have that IP address in there at the moment. 
and that's your public IP address, not your not your Raspberry Pi IP address. So now that I have that domain, which is a2t.duckdns.org, okay, I can then use this to configure our DNS. Right, so what we've got to do now, if we come back to Linux server forward slash duck DNS and we take our Docker Compose from here. So now we're in Portainer, we're going to go to Stacks and then we're going to add a new stack. Okay, and we're going to call this Duck DNS. In fact, we'll do it all small case. And then we're going to paste our Docker Compose file into here. Right, so now we need to do a couple of things here. So a PUID and a PGID. Now I like to run my dockers. If you have a look in here, I like to run all my dockers under user one, okay, rather than pi. That's why I added it to the Docker group. Right, to find out what our PUID and our PGID is, we are going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. And because we're on Windows, we're going to use putty. And we'll put 984. And then we're going to open. And we're going to log in as user one. Okay, now we're logged in. We can find out our PUID and our PGID by putting ID and then user one. So it's returned that the UID is 1001, 1001, and the GID is 100. So GID is the same as PGID, they're the same. So we're dealing with 1001 and 100. So we can change these two. So we've changed them two values. I'm in London, so the time zone is correct. So as you can see on this line here, you can have more than one subdomain. Now what that means is if we use .dns, we'll need a subdomain for each container that we use. So we'd have one for Nextcloud, we'd have one for WordPress, etc. So we could have A2T and then Nextcloud, and then we could have A2T, WordPress. So for each one that you add, you would need to add the fully qualified domain name, which is the subdomain, to these sections here. So we've got our A2T duckdns.org, and we're going to paste that into here. So you just separate that with a comma. But we only have one, that's all we're dealing with. Okay, so coming down the line now, the next thing we need is our token, which you can get from within our duck DNS. So our tokens here, we're going to copy that. And then we're going to paste it here. It's obviously moved into a new line, so take that back. And all we've got to do now is create a path for our config file. So this anything below this colon here, is your local path to where you want to store it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Open Media Vault. I'm going to go to Shared Folder, and then here's my test folder we did earlier. I'm going to add a new folder, and I'm going to call this App Data, and it's going to be on our blue drive. And I'm just going to everyone read and write on that drive. Okay, and then apply. Yes. Right, so that's our app data folder configured. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go to cd forward slash srv. And then I'm going to ls to list what's in there. So there's our there's our blue drive again, the very long name. So we're going to go into that blue drive. So now we are in our blue drive. What we're going to do is we're going to list out by doing ls and we can see that our app data folder is in there as well as our test folder because it's got a green block around it that just means that it's publicly accessible you know obviously if it was a shared then that would be but you have to be a user on the Pi to get access to that folder so as we only have one user account that we actively use that this is fine to have this kind of permissions so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the app data folder and then we're going to ls see there's nothing in there so we're going to create a directory called duck dns Okay, and then we're going to go into that directory and we're going to make another directory and we're going to call this directory config. And then we're going to go into the directory of config, 
just to get the working directory and we're going to pwd for print working directory it should give us the full path for that folder okay so we now have that in memory we're now going to go back to portainer and then where it says path to app data config we're going to go in there now and we're going to paste that in okay make sure it's all on one line so that's all we need to do right now for our duck dns I've just realized that under subdomains that we shouldn't have the duckdns.org on the end. It should just be the subdomain. So it should be A2T or whatever your subdomain is. If you put the subdomain and then you put the duckdns.org, you will end up getting errors uh, coming through and it won't update your IP properly as it only wants the subdomain value there. If you do accidentally set duckdns.org as a parameter in the subdomains, um, this is what it looks like in the log file. If you see this in the log file, then you know that it's most likely that you've put in the full, full domain name instead of just the subdomain. So I hope that makes sense to you. So now we've done all the settings here, all we've got to do now is click on deploy the stack. If you guys are enjoying our content, if you can give us a like and a subscribe, that will be great. If you click the notification bell, you'll be notified of any new content that we put up. So now we're going to go to containers. And as you can see, we have a duck DNS container. Now we're just going to check the log down here to make sure everything's working. Everything seems to be fine. Okie doke. Now duck DNS container is installed. If it notices any changes on your IP address from your router, it will send it back up the pipe all the way through to your cloud DNS service, which is duck DNS, which will provide it back to your visitor, solving the dynamic DNS problem. So the final thing we can do is to check that your domain is working. So we can click on a new tab and we'll put in our domain name, a2t.duckdns.org. And if you guys get this page, it means everything is configured and working correctly. So this concludes today's episode. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.